Hi friend, I hope you're doing super super well. So in our series of redemption we talked last week about persecution. We talked about and ended with the story of Stephen and how he got stoned. And in that, at the end of the story, we hear about a man who approved of the murder of Stephen. This man's name was Saul. Saul wasn't a guy you would think of like as a bad guy. Saul really believed in what he was doing. Saul was a man that studied scripture, that was knowledgeable about scripture. He was a very, very studied and knowledgeable man who loved God and who loved his faith. And Saul was a man who truly believed that the followers of Jesus were wrong and that Jesus was not the Messiah and those followers would bring people into deception and would actually lead them down a bad path. And it would cause all kinds of problems. And that's what he was worried about. And so he did the things he was doing out of conviction, out of like he really truly believed that he was right. He didn't do it out of hatred or anything. He truly believed he was right. And then he's going on his way. He's going on his way persecution, uh, persecuting the followers of Jesus. He puts them to prison. He puts them to trial. All those things. And then he gets more and more excited about what, about what he's doing because he feels like I'm doing the right thing. And then he goes to the leaders and says, guys, like, what about you give me permission to go even further outside of the city, outside of this area, and then I can catch them all. He truly believed he was doing the right thing. He was doing the right thing for his country. He was doing the right thing for his faith, everywhere. He truly believed it. And so he got the approval letter signed and he's on his way. In his head, he's probably thinking about how can I arrest the most of them and clear it out so this movement will stop. Because it really threatens my faith and it really threatens our um, our, um, life and our people. He truly believed that. So Saul, outside looking at him, looking at his heart, wasn't a bad person. He wanted to do the right thing. But was the right thing the right thing? Obviously not. (laughs) So now he's on this road. He's on his journey to catch more believers. And on this journey, again, he's in the middle of the road, a bright light from heaven shows up. Bright light, really, really bright. If you think about the solar eclipse we had recently, you needed like glasses to look at that, right? So your eyes wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't break um, or burn or whatever. You had to do that to be able to, to look at it. I imagine it was something similar with him. He probably looked at this bright light and it literally blinded him. But with the sun, we kind of know where it's at, but this light, it just showed up out of nowhere. So he couldn't prepare. So he tried to figure out what is going on here. I can't see. And now this bright light, like, was there and blinded me? What, what is going on? And while he was probably still thinking about this and trying to figure out what's going on, he hears a voice. And the voice says, Saul, Saul, why do you keep persecuting me? Now imagine what's going to happen after this moment in his head. 
I can just imagine the wheels turning and he's trying to figure out who am I persecuting? What is going on here? Because to him, it probably didn't look like he's persecuting the Christian or the believers. In his mind, it was like he's doing the right thing. He's taking away people that actually cause bad things to happen. That was his thinking. So his world was rocked in this moment because this voice told him, you're persecuting me. He can't figure out who he's persecuting. Can't figure it out. And so he says, sir, who are you? Who are you? I honestly don't know. I'm not persecuting anyone. Who are you? And then Jesus reveals who he is. He said, I'm Jesus and you're persecuting me. Imagine this moment, the fear that he must have felt. The shame he must have felt. The guilt he must have felt. Because he was going after Jesus and he realizes now, oh my goodness, he's real. He was the Messiah. He probably in this moment, he realizes that everything he was doing to this point was wrong. Maybe he was even thinking about, oh, I should be punished now. Probably the next sentence Jesus is going to say, he's going to be like, and this is your end, Saul. Goodbye. But no. Jesus tells him to do something. He says, go to the next town and you will be told what to do. Do you see the redemption here? Jesus is not just knocking him out and being like, dude, you're done. You did bad, you're out. No. He's like, go to town. I'll tell you what to do. He has a redemption plan for Saul, for this man who persecuted him. And then he goes to this town and of course he can't see. And then God speaks to one follower of him and he says, hey, go to this house and you're going to find Saul there. Imagine that, how that conversation went with the follower of Jesus. Imagine what was going on in his head first. And I was probably thinking, oh my goodness, like this is, this is crazy. Like you realize who this guy is? You realize it? This guy went after all of us and tried to get rid of all of us. Put us to jail, kill us, whatever. This dude was after us. You know, he's dangerous. You know? Do you know that? You know what you're saying? You want me to talk to him and go there in this house where he's at? You're making no sense. That makes no sense. But then he tells him, you know, Saul is praying. He's praying in this room. Go to him. Go to him and share with him. And he also tells him like how much Saul will be a light for the kingdom and how much persecution and challenges he will go through during his life. And then Hananiah went and talk to him. It's quite amazing to think all the characters and what they went through in this story. Like we have Saul, a man that turns from a persecutor, realizing that he was on the wrong track. And then we have a follower of Jesus who 
was supposed to go to this man who before was probably, if he would have gone there, would have arrested him and put him to jail or put him to death, who knows? But he caught him. Like he went, not caught him, he went there to bring the good news to him. Two people on the opposite side. God brings them together and does something really powerful. I want to encourage you with this. When we look at this time, we look at Saul, a man who truly believed that he was right in what he was doing. But in reality, he was doing the wrong thing. Aren't there people today in this world that maybe are confused like that too? But what about if instead of going against them and say like, oh, I hate them or whatever, or they're terrible or whatever. Instead, what about if we start praying for them? What if we see encounters like the Saul to Paul encounter? Where a person totally changes and works on the one side, but then comes to Jesus and he transforms them. How powerful would that be? Wouldn't that be amazing? So I want to encourage you. Ask God this week to point out to you the salts in today's time. And then ask him how you can pray for them. And then start praying for them. And then pray that they will have such a strong encounter with Jesus that they will be changed and that they will be such a powerful force for the kingdom that nobody can really stand in their way. It will be amazing. Take the steps. You will see how we can see great transformation. And maybe there might be a Saul that just got touched by God and now needs Hananiah to show up. But you might be scared to go to that person because it might mean you lose some of your reputation or people might think certain things of you because you went up to them. But do it anyway. Let God lead you there and let God give you the words for them. And then see what God can do through them. It's going to be amazing. So Father, I just want to pray. Guide our steps. Encourage us. Move us forward, Father, with the things, yeah, where we in our hearts might judge somebody and might look at somebody and be like, wow, that's a terrible person. But move us to a place where we say like, okay, Father, I want to pray for them that they will have an encounter with you and turn from a Saul to a Paul. Father, I want to pray that you give us revelation and open our eyes to who those people are in our world today. Who are those salts that stand on the one side but you want to move to the other. You want to use them to build your kingdom. Who are they? Reveal those to us. So we can see redemption in their lives. So we can see them come into the kingdom and become a powerful force for your kingdom. Give us a heart for them. And give us courage to take those steps if you call us to meet with them or to go up to them or to maybe lose some of our reputation because we go to them. 
but help us to do that without fear. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're with us. Again, fill us with your Holy Spirit. We don't want to do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. But Holy Spirit, go with us. We love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. And we want to see the souls come into the kingdom. So they become Paul's. And they will touch the places you call them into. Thank you, God. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week, friend. And don't forget, ask God for the souls in this world and start praying for them. And also, if he calls you to talk to them, don't worry about your reputation or anything like that. Just trust and be the Hananiah that disciples them. God bless you. Bye.